folks, uh, this is Jason and I'll be okay today. Um, we're going to just be um, giving some uh, reflections on the resurrection <clears throat> of Christ and, and try to talk about whether there is any evidence uh, for, for the resurrection. So first of all, um, from the Rational Response Squad, um, we read these words. There's actually no historical evidence that isn't hotly disputed item within the field of history to prove that he ever was even a man, much less the Son of God. So what are my thoughts about that? Well, I think that 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 statement really uh, shows really a lack of a, a lack of understanding of history uh, about Christ. There are facts about Christ which we're going to be looking at later that show that that. Um, that he died, that there was an empty tomb, etc., etc., and these facts are not in dispute. They're accepted by the main body of scholars. So, skeptics these days are propounding to you a bunch of lies. In 1 Corinthians 15, 14, and 15, we read, If Christ was not raised, then your faith is useless. If Christ um, was not raised, we are false witnesses. As we look at the resurrection of Christ, we need to ask certain questions. Can we find a variety of sources? Is the testimony from enemies? Is there anything that at uh, our stock inquiry that adheres to the criteria of embarrassment? Is there any eyewitness material? Is this material early? These are some of the questions that we need to ask in this discussion about um, the resurrection of Christ. Uh, Dr. Gary Habermas um, has compiled a vast amount of sources, I think it's over 14,000 uh, articles that he's looked at and that he shows that adhere to certain basic facts. These articles are from Germany, France, etc. and he's compiled a massive co uh, encyclopedia of information about Jesus from these articles. That's majority of them believe in certain facts about Jesus Christ. So if we put these facts together, we get some amazing, interesting conclusions. If we looked at fact number one, recorded in all the Gospels and in sources that are not Christian, the fact that Christ died on the cross, that he died. You have uh, Josephus, you have Tacitus, Lucian of Samosata, you have Mara, Bara, Serapion, and you have the Jewish Talmud. If that's not enough, um, I don't know what it is in the Jewish Talmud. It says Jesus was hanged. Hanging is a synonym of crucifixion. Uh, Tacitus and Josephus are accepted uh, faithful, honest historians. Uh, the scholarship for Josephus, which I've noted many times to you, most will accept. Uh, most of what Josephus says as accurate 
concerning Jesus. Maybe a few words have been interpolated. But most will accept that there is wide historical support that Christ died, crucified. Wasn't it not um, on Frey, the French philosopher, who said no one was crucified <coughs> in first century <coughs> Jerusalem? And we found a first century uh, skeleton with a crucifixion nail through the foot, thereby showing the atheist philosopher on Frey hadn't got a clue what he was talking about. <coughs> John Dominic, John Dominic Crossan, um, Jesus, a revolutionary biography, page 145, said about Jesus and him dying on a cross that he was crucified is as sure as any historical um, anything historical can ever be. <coughs> Next, One of the um, sources of evidence that the tomb became empty is enemy uh, testimony. There is an unwitting testimony by the Sahindran that the tomb was empty. They said it had been stolen, but that's a tacit ag acknowledgement of, um, of enemy um, attestation. Uh, you can find in Justin Martyr's dialogue with Trifold, 108, Tertullian speeches, 30, Jewish Toledoth, he was not in his group, 11, 15, you are not to say his di disciples came during the night, and you are to say his disciples came during the night and stole him away while we were asleep. So basically there is uh, enemy attestation there, we can see that there were those who actually acknowledged that the body the tomb was empty. We also see that women were testifying to the empty tomb. Now, Jewish women particularly were not accepted as important in the law courts for testimony, so why would the early church use women to testify to the empty tomb? So we've understood that the empty tomb, uh, and then fact number three that there were appearances of Jesus. Now you find in the Gospels that they really believed, the disciples really believed that Jesus rose from the dead. One minute these disciples were bold, uh, sorry, timid at the crucifixion of Jesus. They were timid and then afterwards they are bold. And we have to explain this historical fact. Now the main evidence uh, for this is um, Peter, Paul, John all stated that they had seen Jesus appear. We also have the 1 Corinthians passage which is the earliest historical material we have about early Christianity and what they believed. 
we can look at various um, traditional writers such as Polycarp, Irenaeus also uh, tells us that they believed in um, the early disciples saw resurrected Jesus. Now, there's a whole, whole literature outside the Gospels that talk about the disciples seeing Jesus rise from the dead. We have the Didache, Clement of Rome, Shepherd of Hermas, Ignatius, Polycarp, Diogenetus, Papaeus, Quadratus of Athens, Aristides, Justin Martyr, Claudius, Apollonius, Minicius, Felix, Melator of Sardines, uh, Hegespus, Dionysius of Corinth, Irenaeus of Lyons, Rodan, Theophilus of Caesarea, Theophilus of Antioch, Maximus of Jerusalem, Polycrates of Ephesus, Clement of Alexander, Tertullian, Serapion of Antioch, Apollonius, Caius, Philitus of Rome, and Origen. It kind of just goes on and on and on. Now, when the disciples saw these appearances, which we've been able to confirm by the Gospels and other literature and Paul's epistle, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, um, it had an effect. The, the, these disciples became bold. They became contending for the faith in the very area that where they could have been disproved wrong. They were preaching in Jerusalem. So why? Why didn't anybody challenge them? So, Jim Jones and David Koresh <clears throat> says this, nearly all scholars agree that the disciples of the risen Jesus that transformed their life. So we have three grand facts on the table, which there's tons of evidence for. Jesus died, the tomb became empty. So that's Jesus died, the tomb became empty, number two and three. Uh, the disciples saw appearances of Jesus. We see also in this that Paul was converted, a murderer, a persecutor, a Pharisee. We also see that James was converted, the Lord's brother. Both were unbelievers, and yet they came to know and believe in Christ. So, these appearances were not only to the disciples, but to skeptics. So, again, we ask the question, which view, which opinion takes into consideration the, all the facts? As we look at those various hypotheses, we see that they all fell to the ground. I think if you read uh, Norman Geisler, uh, Frank Turek, I don't have enough faith to be an atheist, Crossway Books, Wheaton, um, page 299, we read Gary Habermas, skeptics must provide more than alternative theories to the resurrection, they must provide first century evidence for those theories. And again, uh, a number of 
a number of uh, theories that have come forward to try and compete is number one you have the idea that the Bayes theorem <clears throat> that you use the Bayes theorem like Richard Carrier and if we use that method we can get to a better understanding of the resurrection but the Bayes theorem nobody uses in historical inquiry these days or if they do they're very rare you have people like Richard Carrier also saying uh, that Jesus was a myth um, this cannot be substantiated because the Gospels are just full of bursting full of historical facts and it's obvious that uh, to say that Jesus is a myth is, is just too simplistic and doesn't accord with the evidence also that uh, one of the reasons for this myth idea is that it, Jesus comes from Mithraism but if you look at Mithraism from 500 AD uh, BC to um, to 600 AD there's hardly any literature that tells you what Mithraism is so when people are saying that Christianity came out of Mithraism it, it's very weak scholarship at best uh, it's not even on the table really to, to be taken seriously and in fact no academic scholars in the historical Jesus studies takes those kind of ideas seriously um, Dominic Crossan has come up with the idea that Jesus was a kind of Sinic philosopher uh, in Galilee because we find Roman and Greek ruins but if you read um, the first essay by Dr. Evans in the Historical Jesus Studies uh, book, um, Cambridge Guide to Jesus, you'll find that he completely debunks Dominic Crossan by showing that uh, the funerary rites and the pots that we found all confirmed that Galilee was a very strong Jewish area. So, and there is no literature that we found of any significance that would prove that there was Sinic philosophical influence in that area. So Dominic Crossan's ideas fall to the ground. Bart Ehrman would generally try to show there are contradictions within the goology and the methodology of many. If you read the book Inerrancy and the Gospels or Gospels and the Inerrancy by Poitras on John Frame's website, John Frame is a Christian philosopher, there you'll find a really good exposition of the various contradictions of the Gospels. But when one Gospel says uh, an angel appeared or another Gospel says two angels appear, then you have to be careful because it's only the Gospel showing different emphasis and as we look at it in that perspective there aren't any contradictions. Um, the other issue um, is conspiracy theories that maybe there was a, some kind of conspiracy, maybe uh, authorities stole it, maybe Jesus stole it, uh, maybe, um, maybe his disciples stole the body. Well, Either way, why would the disciples be preaching in Jerusalem Jesus rose from the dead if they stole the body? It doesn't make sense. Or even if the authorities stole the body. Um, so it just doesn't make sense at all. Um, some people have said over the years that Jesus could have just fainted that he kind of like nearly died uh, and it looked as if he was dead but can you honestly believe that a half emaciated Jesus would turn up with oars in his hands almost dead try and gasp him for breath and then tell his disciples that his disciples were going to Jerusalem preaching a resurrection do you really think that's a plausible hypothesis in the ancient world, if you were crucified, you generally died. It's very rare that you didn't die. So, looking at it from a, a medical point of view, 
Um, there is clear evidence that he died in terms of the blood coming out of the stomach with the water. The idea that maybe Jesus had a twin brother is just not plausible. We have no evidence of that. Um, that Jesus, uh, that it all happened through an alien, uh, is some of the craziest stuff people have said. It actually is that really a plausible explanation? The fact of the matter is, there isn't any hypotheses that is better than the explanation that the Christian faith has that Christ rose from the dead. It rules out every other possibility. Again, the only strong argument that you could use is the argument, argument that miracles don't happen, that David Hume used, but that is debunked from the, because of the quantum level. We don't know what goes on at the quantum level. So to be dogmatic like that is just not being intellectually honest. So you're left with strong evidence that points to Jesus rising from the dead. And I would recommend um, going to Gary Habermas's website on the resurrection. I would recommend that you go to Mike Lacona's website on the resurrection. And I would recommend that you read Lee Strubble's The Case for Christ. And also, if you want to read more scholarly information, The Resurrection of Jesus by Mike Lacona. So I hope this has been a blessing to you and an encouragement to you and a help to you today. And so God bless you. And uh, see you soon.